Assalamu alaikum. This is the third part on the series on halitosis, the bad breath. In this presentation, we shall go through the evidence for the treatment of the major cause of halitosis, halitosis from the oral cavity. We'll go with some details on the evidence for the management of the oral causes of halitosis that account for more than 85% of the total cases of bad breath, starting with the mechanical reduction of the uh, oral causes, intraoral nutrients, as well as intraoral microorganisms, particularly in the two most common sites, the dorsum of the tongue and the periodontal membrane. And then we'll go through the chemical reduction of the microorganisms using various antibacterial agents, uh, followed by how we can uh, invert the volatile fragrant gases that causes halitosis, particularly the sulfur, volatile sulfur compounds into non-volatile components. And then we'll go through the techniques used for masking of the malodor. And finally, we'll go through uh, other new techniques, including photodynamic therapy and lasers. The mechanical reduction of the tongue coating is one of the most important aspects in the management of halitosis, as tongue coating is the most prominent factor in the uh, bad breath. The scrapping of the dorsum of the tongue can reduce the available nutrients for the microorganisms and also reduce the microorganisms load itself. And although this can be done by the use of a soft toothbrush, there is evidence to support that the use of a special tongue scraper will produce uh, better results. Um, since the largest amount of coating is found on the posterior part of the dorsum of the tongue, the uh, scrapping should start as posterior as can be tolerated by the patient. And to prevent any uh, gagging or tendency for vomiting, it's advisable uh, to protrude the tongue as far as possible anteriorly while scrapping its uh, dorsum. The two common techniques to scrap the dorsum of the tongue are the tongue scrapers or the use of a soft toothbrush. A systemic review of uh, the results of both techniques had showed that although the use of either of them could uh, bring about a 60% reduction in the volatile sulfur compounds coming out from the dorsum of the tongue, the use of the uh, scrapers, the tongue scrapers, can uh, reduce these volatile sulfur compounds by 75% and the use of a toothbrush by only 45%. The average for the two is about 60% reduction in the production of volatile sulfur compounds from the oral cavity. The other benefit of tongue scrapping is that it seems to improve the sense of taste after scrapping the tongue. Another systematic review carried out by the Cochrane group on the same question which is better, tongue scrapping or tooth brushing, and confirmed the earlier results that uh, tongue scrapping is more effective than tooth brushing, but only marginally. And both techniques can only reduce the level of volatile sulfur compounds, the main cause for halitosis, for a short duration, on average about 30 minutes. But it confirmed that although the effect is limited, the scrapping of the dorsum of the tongue remains one of the best uh, ways of treating oral halitosis. Further evidence was produced by this randomized control trial on the use of tongue scrapping uh, plus other techniques in which patients were divided into four groups. The first group would only toothbrush, the second will toothbrush and also use interdental flossing. On the third group to this 
uh, tongue scraping will be added to the tooth brushing and on the fourth group uh, tongue scraping will be added to uh, tooth brushing and interdental uh, flossing and the results came uh, showing significant reduction in the volatile sulfur compounds in the last two groups in which the tongue scraping was included in the treatment regimen that should be carried three times a day for at least one week. And this confirmed the uh, prior results that tongue is the uh, one of the most recognized sites for most of the volatile sulfur compounds production and that tongue scraping results in improvement in the uh, breath and reduction in volatile sulfur compounds. The second most important cause for bad breath is periodontitis. A regular interdental cleaning by flossing and tooth brushing should be carried out on a regular basis to control the formation of plaque and also reduce the microorganisms in the oral cavity. And well, if this is, fails to control the periodontitis, a one-stage full mouth uh, disinfection has been described to be carried out by professional periodontal therapy. And uh, this would combine full mouth uh, scaling and root planning, and then the use of a uh, an oral antiseptic like chlorhexidine. This uh, type of therapy had showed a prolonged effect for almost two months for a reduction in the microorganisms in the oral cavity and also improvement in the tests that quantifies halitosis like organoleptic uh, scores. In addition to the mechanical reduction of the microorganisms and nutrients in the oral cavity, the use of chemotherapeutic agents to reduce the bacterial load is also important. The most common active ingredients in this group includes triclosan, chlorhexidine, cetylpyridinium chloride, zinc, and essential oils incorporated into a tooth base and mouthwashes in different concentrations. We shall go through them all one by one. Alcohol-free antiseptic mouthwashes can provide better results compared to antiseptic mouthwashes that has alcohol as one of its ingredients. Alcohol can cause dryness of the oral mucosa, limiting the uh, effectiveness of the antiseptic mouthwash. A Cochrane systematic review was carried out to compare the effectiveness of different mouthwashes with different uh, composition and in different concentrations. Uh, it showed that uh, some of the ingredients are better in doing one particular uh, task in reducing the volatile sulfur compounds, while other components can uh, produce better results in another aspect. For example, the use of chlorhexidine plus the cytylpyridine chloride can inhibit the production of volatile sulfur compounds, whereas the use of chlorhexidine with zinc can neutralize the sulfur compounds uh, production by the oral cavity microorganisms. We would now go through the different chemotherapeutic agents one by one, starting with chlorhexidine, which is the most efficient molecule against plaque formation. Chlorhexidine inhibits this a wide spectrum of uh, microorganisms. It controls plaque better than any other molecule and prevents um, its accumulation, thereby um, improving the halitosis. Its method of action is penetration of the cell membrane of the oral bacteria, and this would cause cell leakage and disruption of the uh, bacteria metabolism. It has been shown that the use of a mouthwash containing chlorhexidine can reduce the volatile sulfur compounds by as much as 43 percent uh, for a full day and can also reduce the tests for quantifying halitosis by as much as 50 percent scores. 
The disadvantages of chloroxidine includes the reversible discoloration of the tongue or the teeth or the dentures. And this can be minimized by brushing the teeth before the use of chloroxidine mouthwashes and also by use of another conventional uh, denture cleaner uh, to clean the dentures. There may be also a transient taste disturbance and some burning sensation with the use of chloroxidine that usually settles with time. Another widely used chemotherapeutic agent in the management of halitosis is triclosan, which is an active ingredient in many of the oral health products. It is lipid soluble and has a recognized effect on plaque formation and has a bactericidal effect, particularly on gram negative microbes. It reduces the uh, production of volatile sulfur compounds and if it is combined with a copolymer, it adheres to the soft and the hard tissues of the oral cavity for up to 12 hours. It has been shown that it can reduce the volatile sulfur compounds by as much as 84% uh, for up to three hours. Hyperperidine chloride is very effective against uh, plaque formation and also against the formation of calcified debris in the oral cavity. If it is included in mouthwashes, the effectiveness can be as much as 70%. It has few side effects. Zinc is another active ingredient that can be used in different chemical uh, compounds and different um, concentrations and also in different forms, either as a mouthwash, a toothpaste, a chewing gum, or even in a tablet form. It's very versatile for that reason. The zinc act by inhibiting the breakdown of the proteins by the microorganisms in the oral cavity. And if it is successful in doing this, it prevents the transformation of amino acids containing sulfur into volatile sulfur compounds. This can, for example, be achieved by zinc acetate. Another form of zinc, the zinc lactate, can neutralize the volatile sulfur compounds by transforming the sulfides into sulfatides and these can don't have any uh, mal or unpleasant, unpleasant odors. It can be incorporated into uh, chewing gums and can be used as a supplement. Another active ingredient is the fluoride compounds. Amine fluoride and tin fluoride in combination can cause 83% reduction in the morning halitosis. Uh, these two compounds inactivates the oral bacteria on the surface of the tongue and thereby reduce the production of volatile sulfur compounds. Uh, sodium fluoride can be incorporated into uh, chewing gums. Other active ingredients include essential oils, for example, thymol, menthol, or eucalyptus. They can destroy the bacterial cell wall and also inhibit some of the bacterial enzymes. They also give a fresh odor to the breath. They can only work for short periods. Their effect is restricted to about three hours and produce only about 25% reduction in volatile sulfur compounds activity. Other less used agents include things like hydrogen peroxide, it is claimed that it can produce as much as 90% reduction in the uh, production of volatile sulfur compounds for up to eight hours. We've been through the individual active ingredients used in the treatment of halitosis. It's clear that they have different mechanisms of action and different success rates in some of the steps of the uh, halitosis 
some uh, would inhibit bacteria, others would inhibit the protein breakdown producing the volatile sulfur compounds, and some would neutralize the volatile sulfur compounds after it has been produced. It was natural to think about mixing some of these individual ingredients uh, together to gain the best possible effectiveness. A Cochrane review has looked into some of these uh, mixing formulas and came to the conclusion that chloroxidine with the uh, cytolipridine chloride and a low percent of zinc can offer the best possible uh, success rate in reducing the concentration of the volatile sulfur compounds and also in the reducing the bacterial counts in saliva. Um, so that this compound of chloroxidine, cytolipiridine chloride, and zinc lactate uh, showed significantly less uh, production of volatile sulfur compounds and also significantly better scores, uh, organoleptic scores, used in the uh, quantification of the degree of halitosis and also reduced bacterial count and neutralized some of the uh, odiferous sulfur compounds as well. In addition to the Cochrane systematic review, there had also been some recent uh, randomized control trials. Some of them were double-blind crossover trials that had looked at a combination of some of the um, individual active ingredients and one such a trial looked into the effect of zinc acetate uh, in addition to chloroxidine as a mouth rinse and showed that a certain mixture of zinc acetate and chloroxidine could give a clear and durable effect in the inhibition of intraoral halitosis for up to uh, 12 hours. Chemotherapeutic agents are usually used as a mouth rinse or a toothpaste, sometimes a chewing gum, but can also be used in the form of tablets. And there are supplements of zinc that can be used for this reason, and uh, some tablets of uh, dihydroscopic acid that can be used as an oxidizing agent to neutralize the volatile sulfides. There are also tablets with chlorophyll and active carbon tablets. The chemotherapeutic active ingredients can be used in the form of toothpaste, things like stannous fluoride, zinc, or triclosan are widely used as a, a toothpaste. They offer some beneficial effect in the reduction of the malodor but only for a limited period of time. And this table sums up some of the results that we have been through so far. It shows that um, rinsing the mouth with just water can be effective, but only for about 15 minutes. Some other um, rinses are not effective, like the use of sanguinarine rinse. The use of essential oils can be useful. Um, it has a measurable effect, but a very limited one and uh, indeed also very short lived. The use of zinc chloride rinses can produce marked reduction in the volatile sulfur compounds levels for up to 10 hours and can reduce halitosis for by about 71%. Mixing up some of these uh, individual active ingredients can also be useful, like mixing up of essential oils, water, and cytopyridinium. Chloride can all give a, a very good response. Um, chloroxidine is, uh, has a marked effect, antimicrobial effect, again, is gram negative and gram positive, and have a good response um, in the control of halitosis, but Unfortunately, it also has some side effects like the staining uh, effect on the tongue and the teeth and also uh, some irritation to the dorsum of the tongue and a bitter taste. Um, chloride dioxide, there is no much research to support and uh, some caution is advised on the use of chloride dioxide as a mouth rinse. Cytolipridinium chloride 
has showed uh, a very good response in the reduction of the uh, volatile sulfur compounds production for about three hours. And then this is another approach to the problem of the volatile sulfur compounds. This is the use of chemicals to neutralize its effect rather than stopping its production. And it can be incorporated into things like toothpaste, mouth rinses, and lozenges. Um, the active ingredients of this group of chemical neutralizers are either metal ions or oxidizing agents. The metal ions, things like uh, zinc, sodium, magnesium, they can interact with the uh, sulfur ion and produce insoluble compounds like sulfides that is no longer uh, volatile enough to cause the bad breath. The mechanism of this is that the metal can oxidize the thiol group of the um, sulfur-containing amino acid, the precursors of the volatile sulfur compounds. The oxidation process uh, of the volatile sulfur compounds can bring about a reduction of about 29% um, of the cases of halitosis for about four hours in one study. The positively charged ions, metal ions, um, also can bind with the sulfur radicals inhibiting the volatile sulfur compounds expression. Uh, so a mixture of these chemical neutralizing agents plus the antiseptic uh, agents, active ingredients we have been th uh, through so far can provide better results. And it was shown that mixing up of zinc plus chlorhexidine seemed to have a synergistic effect in the control of halitosis. One other way of trying to control halitosis is the old way of masking the effect rather than treating the cause of halitosis. It's not a treatment and it's not effective in the management of halitosis. Nevertheless, it can be used sometimes to mask the effect of the volatile sulfur compounds by the use of certain pleasant flavors and fragrances. Uh, things like um, flavored uh, mouthwashes or chewing gum or sprays with menthol, eucalyptus or methyl salicylate are widely used. The results of the use of such masking agents, like a chewing gum or sucking on a mint, are very short-lived. Some of the um, trials using these masking agents showed uh, no certainty in the value of the use of uh, such agent, like for example eucalyptus chewing gum or topical agents used in sprays. Um, one mechanism for the action of this masking effect plus the uh, freshness of the breath is that it may uh, in initiate more salivary production. The increased uh, volume of saliva can retain more soluble sulfur compounds for a short period of time. Advice on diet modification can also be of some help in the treatment of halitosis. Things like drinking sufficient fluids, not omitting breakfast, sucking on a sugar-free sweet or a chewing gum, uh, sugar-free again if there is a sensation of a dry mouth because this can promote some salivary production, stopping smoking and alcohol, uh, the use of baking soda and the uh, toothpaste, and the um, limiting of the frequency of consuming sugary uh, food and drinks to three or four times a day with the meals, also, uh, a diet free of onion, garlic, and similar foodstuffs can also prevent the associated transient blood-borne halitosis. Treatment of gastroesophageal reflux is also of help. After attempts at uh, reducing the bacteria that produces the volatile sulfur compounds, it may be useful to um, try 
probiotics that is going to prevent the re-establishment of such uh, harmful bacteria again. The use of some of the probiotic strains uh, can be useful, so either Streptococcus or Lactobacillus or Rosella cibaria. Uh, can be useful in preventing the re-establishment of the um, pathogenic bacteria and also in the inhibition of volatile sulfur compounds uh, production, both in vitro and in vivo. And there has been some positive reports supporting the use of probiotics, like, for example, the Electrobacillus salivarius, uh, WB21, or the Streptococcus salivarius, M18. Uh, there has been some reports of an improvement in the uh, uh, reduction of the volatile sulfur compounds for uh, the use of such agents. Uh, also, the daily use of lactobacilli not only seemed to improve the physiological halitosis in the morning, but also showed beneficial effects on uh, the gingival condition and it prevents bleeding from the gingival and periodontal uh, pockets. Therapy was tried in the treatment of halitosis. This involves a use of a non-toxic light-sensitive photosensitizer that can be activated when combined with a light at the appropriate wavelength and that coincide with the absorption spectrum of the photosensitizer. This would activate the photosensitizer and the excitement would lead to a reaction with the oxygen in the immediate medium and this would form a reactive oxygen uh, species. This reactive oxygen species can then destroy some of the bacterial cell wall and also affect its metabolism at different levels, causing giving an antimicrobial effect that is strictly confined to the area covered by the light uh, activated. It's unlikely that this is going, bacteria is going to form any resistance to this since the activated uh, singlet oxygen and free radicals uh, can interact with various types of bacteria, uh, cell structures, and also different uh, parts of the metabolic pathway. It is claimed that the photodynamic therapy can cause as much as a reduction of uh, volatile sulfur compounds by 31. something percent. However, in a very recent systematic review of randomized controlled trials involving more than 200 participants that compared their effectiveness of photodynamic therapy on halitosis to the effect of tongue scrapping alone showed little or no difference between photodynamic therapy and a simple tongue scrapping in terms of reducing halitosis and also in reducing microbiological activities. There were no adverse uh, events uh, associated with the use of photodynamic therapy. When photodynamic therapy was um, combined with tongue scrapping on one group and uh, against tongue scrapping alone in another group, there was some difference in favor of the combined uh, photodynamic therapy and tongue scrapping. And the conclusion was that there is very low certainty evidence that photodynamic therapy uh, works in the treatment of halitosis, awaiting further uh, results from other studies. Another recent technique in the treatment of halitosis is the use of low-level lasers uh, therapy. This was used initially in the management of mucositis in the oral cavity uh, after treating oral cavity cancers with radiotherapy or chemotherapy. The evidence was reviewed by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence and it concluded that the safety profile for low-level low lasers um, uh, showed no major safety concerns. 
It also concluded that the evidence on the efficacy is adequate in quality and quantity and advised that this procedure can be used. The technique involves the use of red laser diode with a point application method and indirect contact with the tongue dorsum. The irradiation will be done in six points in the posterior and the middle parts of the tongue dorsum with a distance of about one centimeter between uh, the points. In the management of halitosis, there are some red flags that uh, may be associated with sinister pathologies like unexplained ulceration of the oral cavity uh, persisting for more than three weeks or either a lump in the lip or the oral cavity or a discoloration either red or red and white patches that may be consistent with erythroplakia or erythroleukoplakia or an unexplained atypical enlargement of the gingivae that may be a sign of hematological malignancies such as uh, leukemias. And this is a general summary of the classification of the halitosis and the corresponding treatment needs, the TN, for each of the uh, subgroups. The first group is by far the largest, the physiological halitosis, um, in whom the patients don't have any real pathology in the oral cavity involving the tongue or the gingiva, but have temporary halitosis after a night's sleep or after fasting. And these patients would require TN number one. The second is genuine pathological halitosis in whom there is a disease mostly in the tongue base but also can uh, affect the periodontal uh, membrane or uh, have xerostomia. For example, uh, the T, uh, this second group would require uh, treatment number one and also uh, treatment needs number two in addition. The third group is uh, extraoral halitosis in whom they have a disease outside the oral cavity. It can be uh, for example, in the nose or the sinuses, pulmonary cavity, or it can affect the liver, the uh, kidneys, or have diabetes. Uh, this uh, group of patients would require the TN number one and a specific treatment for their extra oral cause TN number three. The fourth group are the pseudo halitosis group. These are patients who are stubbornly convinced that they have halitosis although this is not perceived by others and the objective tests are negative this group of patients would require the tn, uh, TN number one in addition to um, tn number four uh, 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 treatment as well if this fails if this group of patients remain stubbornly convinced that they have uh, a halitosis that cannot be perceived by others and that tests remain negative then they fall into this group the halitophobia group who require uh, TN number one in addition to other specific uh, psychogenic tr uh, treatment uh, TN number uh, five This is the summary of the treatment needs for the five groups. In TN number one, the physiological halitosis group, the management is basically explanation of the halitosis and advice and instructions on oral hygiene. The focus will be on reinforcement of the patient's own self-care. This is the main thing here, the use of tongue scrapers, tooth toothbrushes, mouth rinses, and different other uh, self-care uh, techniques. In the second group, the genuine oral halitosis, they would require um, also an explanation and advice on the oral prophylaxis and oral hygiene. By in addition, they may require uh, to see 
the dentist for a specific problem, usually in the periodontal membrane. And TN number three, the extra oral halitosis, they would require referral to the specific physician. It can be, the pathology can be in the lungs or it can be in the kidneys, liver, or uh, metabolic like diabetes. And TN number four, the pseudo halitosis group the patients are convinced they have halitosis and they would require an explanation and a thorough examination and an explanation of their condition and education and reassurance if they remain convinced that they have halitosis despite um, this treatment in combination with TN1 as well, then they would need to be uh, referred to a clinical psychologist because they would fall into the group of halitophobia, the TN number five. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the treatment of halitosis, the bad breath. Assalamu alaikum.